All right, welcome to video 14 of the Apes Lecture Series. This one's on population pyramids, which are a really important part of this population unit, right? Age structure diagrams is another name you may hear them called. Uh, there's a very high chance of seeing this on the AP exam. So these are some examples, just some basic outlines for the age structure diagrams. When you look at them, you'll see the population split up between the males and the females. And typically along the x-axis, this is going to be the number of males or the percent population males. And likewise for the females on this side. Going up along the y-axis, you'll typically see five-year age groups, um, zero to four, right, and so on and so forth, all the way up through. Some things to look at, some really good clues to tell you what's happening or what may happen down the road for a population are these different groupings, all right? So we've got the pre-reproductive years, 0 to 14 along the bottom. So everything under 14 years old, these individuals haven't reproduced yet or had the opportunity to reproduce yet, but they will give you a very good idea on future growth, right? A population that has a large amount of pre-reproductive individuals, such as this one, right? This is a very wide set of boxes here. There's a lot of people that haven't had the opportunity to reproduce yet. That's a good indication of an expanding population. If you have a relatively square base, all right, look how square this one is. That's an indication of a stable population. So we don't see a large increase in the pre-reproductive uh, groups. So we would expect that the width of this bar is going to be fairly consistent as it moves up in age, right? As these individuals become reproductive aged, uh, it's not going to be significantly larger than the bars above them. So we wouldn't expect them to have more kids than their parents had. A pinched base over here, how narrow this set of bars is, tells us that in the future, when these individuals are up here in the reproductive years, there's going to be less parents. Less parents, of course, means less children or less reproductive opportunities. So we would expect further uh, shrinking bases. And so as they move through uh, the age, right, as this one moves up in age and reaches the end of their lives, you're going to continue to see this population get smaller and smaller, hence the declining population name. Another good indication of uh, the kind of health of the country or the status of the country is the post-reproductive uh, group. These are the old folks, right? In this age group, you've got the people that cannot work anymore. And so a very large uh, relative to the other age groups, uh, post-reproductive age group, usually indicates that they've got some social and upcoming economic issues, right? You need people to support these older folks, people to provide Medicare for them, public services. Um, so this puts a strain on the economy to have a large amount of post-reproductive ones. Uh, of course, you need some because these are your most skilled workers typically, but at some point they would probably like to retire and, and not have to work anymore. So let's take a look at some example countries and see how they fit into the, the structure diagrams. First one we're going to look at is Afghanistan. Afghanistan, uh, we're in the Middle East. Very, very poor um, birth control opportunities. It's not really in check. The, the thoughts in the country of Afghanistan are very pro, have as many kids as you can. The opportunities for women's education are very slim. And uh, we end up having a graph that looks something like this. Right, so these really standard pyramid-shaped graphs are your clue of high population growth. And you can see this area from 0 to 14 down here. These guys, very wide base, means in the future we're going to have a lot of uh, parents, right, 10, 15 years down the road. These will all be parents, and they'll be having even more children. So this is a high-growth country. Moderate growth. Mexico is a good example of moderate growth. Right, they have kind of moved into the industrial uh, stages and we're shifting towards smaller families there. So this is what it looks like. Right? The top still looks very similar to Afghanistan. We have very pyramid-like um, shape on the top. But the base, right, this, especially this 10 to 14 and below, the base is very squared off. And we're going to expect to have relatively consistent or constant numbers of children in the past. And so that nice squared edge here, we're going to see that continue to move up. Uh, and rather than these like pulled out bars here, we should get a very consistent uh, edge moving up and it should level off the population growth. 
zero growth, the United States. So, right, so we would be kind of that post-industrial country where we've gone through the industrialized period. And now we're shifting towards more automation in our machines, in our workplace. Women in education is, is at an all-time high. Uh, there are a lot of job opportunities out there for women. People are marrying later. We're having kids later in life. And so this is what it would look like. Um, you can see how this is starting to shrink in a little bit here. This is a good indication of slowing population growth of that TFR, total fertility rate, dropping lower and lower and approaching replacement fertility rate. Um, so this one looks extremely different than Afghanistan. We've got a very square base the whole way up. It can get even more exaggerated than this, right? We can pinch these bases in even further, um, and we'll see an example of that momentarily. One thing that's real interesting with these is you can also track kind of the history of the country. And so if you look in the middle here, this is present day uh, United States, and we have this really large bar, kind of unusually large bar, going up through the population, right, about uh, 50 to 60 years old. And we can follow that through uh, as it approached or as they approach uh, the upper age groups here. Uh, one of the big worries with this, of course, is the pressure it's going to put on Social Security and, and the public services, Medicare, that kind of stuff. Who's going to be able to pay to support these people as they retire? Or are they going to be forced to uh, work longer and delay retirement? One of the big problems was the crash in 2009, economic crash. A lot of these people were the ones that lost their life savings uh, when the stock market dropped. And so that is another question of, will we be able to support them? Uh, where is all that extra money going to come from? But it is very interesting to see how that population has moved up through uh, the years and how it's been the widest one since it they were born. And it continues to be the widest one even today uh, in the United States population. Negative growth, so we do have some that have moved past the post-industrial, um, and this is what they kind of look like. Italy is a good example of this. Greece, Japan would be some others. Um, but you can see just how exaggerated this pinch in as at, the, at the bottom. Look at the number of individuals that they have in the reproductive age groups. All right, This is extremely small compared to the number that are in the workforce right now. And so the big worry in these countries is, when this workforce group, right, let's call them 20 to 54 for argument's sake, when that workforce group shifts all the way up and out of the workforce, you're going to have a huge top-heavy pyramid, especially if this pre-reproductive group does not increase the reproductive rate, right? If they continue to shrink down uh, as they go, they have fewer children than their parents did and so on and so forth. Uh, there's going to be nobody left over to support that very top level. And so some of the question is, where do the, where do the workers come from at this point? Because you'd be out uh, of a lot of potential workers, and you have a lot of people relying on uh, having those jobs filled. So some of the effects of it, I kind of mentioned them as we went through, but I'll go through them again quickly. As your percentage of 60 plus, right, these would be our retirees, uh, 60 plus, increase, uh, population begins to decline, right? These people are not able to reproduce anymore, um, and so they're not attributing to any kind of growth. Uh, we have some big problems, right? Medical care, the 60 plus has a huge um, reliance on medical care, especially Medicaid, government supported, the ones that come from our tax dollars. Social security, this is uh, how some of these people are counting on their ability to retire, is to count on the government to give them that social security that they've paid into their entire lives with the promise of being able to use it later in life. Uh, and then costly public services add up on top of that. So the way we can combat that is through automation, which would be a good example. This would be like Google's driverless cars that they're coming out with. If we can automate um, trucks and shipping uh, and logistics like that, that's going to cut down a huge number of jobs that need filled and could potentially help to offset some of these lost workers due to old age and retirement. Another way we combat it, and uh, this is a big topic in the United States, is immigration, right? Immigrants coming in, working jobs, uh, especially the jobs that people don't want to work or lower skilled jobs, does a lot to support a lot to support the economy, right? The, the money that they're making, they're paying taxes on, and that, those tax dollars are coming into Social Security and medical care. Now, one of the big problems is when they're not entering the country legally and they're outside of paying those taxes, 
Um, but the services they provide by doing those jobs is probably outweighs the money that we lose on the tax dollars. Uh, these are a couple more problems. If you'd like to pause and, and look through them, feel free. I, I don't want to get too far over time and, and get into each of these individually. They would make great discussion points for class, though, so you may want to note them and see what the rest of the class has to say about them. Uh, so some countries that we can focus on as kind of a case study, one of them is Japan, and the graying of Japan is kind of this overarching theme for the big problem uh, that's facing Japan right now. They've got a very high elderly population and an extremely low um, growth rate, and so some of the reasons why. So family planning access is very easily accessible in Japan, birth control, um, that kind of stuff where they can control how many people they have. On top of that, Japan's a very small island, uh, just geographic area wise. And so there's not a lot of room to uh, live on Japan. And so the cost of housing is very high. Uh, it's very cramped housing. And so families that can afford housing don't really have a lot of room to host a lot of children in it, right? Expensive land plays into that as well. Another big thing is how focused on education and work that the culture in Japan is leads to late marriages, right? They really value working late um, and working long, uh, long hours, especially as kids in education. So it pushes this marriage to kind of a back burner um, when you're fo so focused on careers and that creates this voluntary decrease in birth rate, all of these combined. Another thing is there's not a very high immigration rate in Japan. There's a lot of uh, good jobs there, but again, the space is very tight and expensive, and so there's not a lot of room to get into it. Um, and so this is an astronomical number. 40% of the national income goes to health insurance and pension. So if we're paying uh, the health costs of its aging population and for paying the retirees their pension funds, uh, almost 50% of their national income. So it's a big problem in Japan. The solution here really is to focus on ways to increase the birth rate. And I believe Japan is even looking at offering government benefits, right? Tax breaks, cheaper housing, um, benefits like that, uh, cheaper health insurance, probably things like that to families that are having more children. So kind of the opposite of the one child policy. Uh, I'm not going to get into China's uh, one-child policy right now. That will be in a future video. And this is where we're going to stop right now. So thank you for watching. Please come prepare with something to discuss uh, and some evidence of note-taking. Uh, appreciate your time.